it's true. Hi, I'm Anna from miss-beatrix.blogspot.com. This is Beatrix, if you can see her very well. She's currently snoring away underneath my armpit, which is always good. Um, I uh, don't normally do vlogs. Um, I much prefer written blog posts rather than vlogs. But I thought it's been a while since I've shown you myself. Hello. Um, and also, today I want to do a review of three craft books. So, seeing as craft books are so heavily visual, I thought, well, this way I can actually show you the books and show you the inside of the books and you can decide whether or not they're for you. Um, before I start, I should probably just do a very quick disclaimer and say I haven't been sent any of these books by some uh, enterprising publishers. I have bought them all myself. Uh, my opinions are based on how I think these books will fit into my crafting interests and lifestyle um, and the use I think I can get out of them. So my opinions are entirely subjective. I'm aware that if someone's written a craft book, it's their baby um, and I don't want to offend anyone, so that's just me being overly sensitive. Um, so, three books I want to review. Let's skip straight to the first one. Knitting Vintage, um, 30 knitting projects inspired by period fashions and it's by Claire Montgomery. Da, da, da. Um, this one was recommended to me by my very good friend Claire in Nottingham. Hello Claire! Um, she is a talented knitter, in fact she's a very talented uh, crafter altogether, um, and I'm a very basic knitter. Um, but this one was recommended because she knows that I'm into vintage inspired clothing. Um, it retails at £16.99. Uh, you can't actually get it on Amazon new at the moment, you can only get it from uh, sellers using Amazon, if that makes sense. Um, but if you go on the Waterstones online website, I do believe you can pre-order it in paperback for £12.99 um, and it's coming out on the 13th of September. But I bought it from the works for a fiver. If you haven't been to the works to look for craft books, I really recommend that you drop in next time you're passing a branch. Um, they tend to have their books just sort of piled up on tables, just willy-nilly all over the place. But um, if you're willing to do a bit of a, a rootle through, this is one that I got from the works fairly recently. Um, I also got um, this one, Homemade Gifts Vintage Style. Again, it retails at £16.99 and I think I paid a fiver for this one at the works as well. Um, I did do a review of this one on the blog, I think, so um, I'll pop a link to that post below this one if you want to read that. It's not one of the ones I'm reviewing today. So, for a fiver, I thought, marvellous, I'll give this one a go. So, this is the hardback version. Um, it contains 30 knitting projects inspired by vintage classic looks, basically. Um, it starts off with the 1920s which is pretty cool if you're into this Great Gatsby craze that's going on up and down the country right now because everyone's anticipating the uh, Great Gatsby film in December and it goes through era by era giving a section um, about the typical fashions of each era all the way through to the 1980s um, just trying to find you a, a typical 80s um, make, there's one it's almost 90s that one, isn't it? Um, what I really like about this book is that I would probably wear 90% of the projects in here. Um, and also, I don't think that they're, they're specific to any one age group. I mean, I'm 25 and sometimes I look at certain vintage clothes and think it wouldn't work on me because it's going to make me look older than I am. That's why I like vintage inspired because it's sort of tailored to the look I'm trying to go for. Um, but I do think that these clothes would also suit um, women in pretty much any other age group as well. Um, I'll just try and show you a couple of the projects. One's a nice 40s top. Um, and there's a Hollywood style beret there which I think is really sweet. Um, I think that the book's well put together. The photos, um, the instructions, they all just seem to flow very nicely. Um, as I say, I'm not an expert knitter, so I can't say I've made any of the projects in this book. 
However, I do know my friend Claire has, and I don't think she's experienced any great difficulties. Um, and I think the photos actually do inspire you to make the projects rather than just looking at them. Because um, they do seem very accessible and applicable to um, the girl who wants to wear vintage inspired in the modern day. So it's not much more to say about this book. Certainly if you can get it at a bargain price at somewhere like the works, you'd be mad not to buy it. I don't think it's one of those that's going to end up on the shelf and never get used, even though I'm not an expert knitter. Um, I do think it is one of those that won't date and uh, you know you can keep picking it up time and time again when you're looking for inspiration or your next knitting project. So that's the first one. Um, the second book I'd like to review... I say review, I'm basically just talking you through them, aren't I really? And looking a bit like um, a preschool teacher doing story time. Um, this one is Craft Challenge, um, Dozens of Ways to Repurpose Scarves, and it's by Nathalie Mornu. Now this one turned up on my blog a couple of weeks ago because I said, I think in a Sunday Sundries post, that I was thinking of buying it. Um, my problem was that there are no reviews on Amazon yet and I can't find it in any branch of Waterstones. I know I could have asked them to order me one but what I really wanted to do was look at it before I bought it. Couldn't find a copy so I decided just to take the plunge. Oh, before I go any further, the reason I've bought these craft books is because I've taken advantage of the Amazon trade-in service which I only found out, discovered, I only, um, found out existed um, a few weeks ago. So if you've got um, some books in great condition that you just don't want anymore, you can literally sell them back to Amazon for Amazon credit, so that's what I've been up to. That's why I decided to take the plunge and buy this book. Um, why did I want this book? I wanted this book because I own a lot of headscarves um, and vintage silk scarves. I pick them up in charity shops, at vintage fairs. Um, I almost have too many now, in fact. I did say the other week that I bought a scarf organiser because it was just getting ridiculous in my scarf drawer. Um, and I see so many scarves and I, I never pay more than about £3 for one, usually between 50p and £3. Um, and I kept thinking, what if I could make them into something? Maybe I could turn that scarf into a beautiful bag or something like that. And so when I stumbled across this book, I thought, ah, that'll give me some ideas of things that I can make with my scarves. Um, I have to say, this book doesn't really fulfil that need. It's very well put together, the photos are second to none. It is an American book, but that's fine, translates perfectly well, no problem at all. Measurements are given in um, yards and inches and in centimetres as well. I just don't think that the projects in here are particularly original. I have seen very similar projects on people's blogs which obviously I read for free. Um, a lot of them are perfectly nice projects and this is my opinion, they don't apply to my life. For example there's one where uh, a couple of scarves have been made into skirts for little girls, this one here. I just don't know any little girls who might want to wear a silk scarf. I don't there's no little girls in my family. Um, there's a lampshade and I just think, well, it's quite obvious. Um, and there's also another one that actually really made me laugh when I saw it. Let me just see if I can spot it for you. Yes, here it is. A scarf that's been made into a sort of papoose to carry your chihuahua around with you. I don't have a chihuahua. I have a Beatrix and she can walk on her own and I'd feel really silly carrying a dog round attached to my boobs in a scarf. Not going to happen. So, I think if you were going to make gifts for people, or if you already have some scarves, just say you've been to India and brought some beautiful scarves home with you and you're thinking, what can I turn them into to remind me of my trip? If you're quite happy to spend more money on finding the perfect scarves, and then spending more money on getting the backing material and everything else you need to make these projects, you can make some stunning items. I wanted this book to help me be thrifty and to upcycle scarves that I bought on the cheap. And um, it's actually going to cost me quite a lot of money to um, make my scarves into anything. Um, that said, there are some lovely projects in here. I think my favourite project is actually the one that's on the front, this beautiful bag. Um, 
and this is going to sound really mean now, but that bag was featured in issue 14 of Mommy Makes a couple of months ago. Um, so I've already got that how to. If I want to make it, it's right there. So to be perfectly honest, I am going to be sending that book back to Amazon. Um, I just think it would become one of those that just sort of sits amongst my craft book collection and doesn't get enjoyed. I don't think the ideas are original enough for my liking. So I might as well send it back, get my money back and uh, give another book a go really. Um, but as I say, if you're someone who quite happily spends money to make something beautiful, which is fine, go for it. Um, you might find some projects in there that um, you know really inspire you to use your scarves or to buy beautiful scarves. It just doesn't really fulfil the need I bought it for. Let's move on. Um, this is the last one that I'd like to review. Um, it's called The Crafter's Guide to Taking Great Photos. Foolproof Techniques to Make Your Handmade Creations Shine Online. And it's by Heidi Abnum. I do hope you can see these well, by the way. I'm just sort of flashing them at the camera. Um, whereas I stumbled across the other two and thought, aha, that fulfills the need, um, I actively sought out a book to help me to take better photographs for the blog. Um, I feel my camera techniques are improving, but the technical jargon straight over my head. Um, also, we've had really bad weather recently, you may have noticed. Um, I've been able to take some great photos on the days where we've had blazing sunshine, all two of them, um, but on the days where it's been really dark in the house and it's been raining outside, which is most of the time, I just feel like my photos aren't up to scratch, so I thought, what do other people do? I need to get some help with um, taking better photos in uh, dark circumstances. Um, so this book, it, it just to judge it by its cover for a second, it's actually very neat and compact. I do feel that like I can chuck it in my bag and if I'm out and about with my camera and I think, oh, that would make a great photo, I'm going to snap that for the blog. Um, I can refer to this if I need any help. Um, and I just think it's beautifully presented. Um, it looks really exciting. The cover looks, you know, like it's a treasure trove. Um, so it's very comprehensive. We've got sections in here on camera basics, so all those technical things I have problems with, like exposure and aperture and um, lighting and focus, making me um, worried just looking at it. Um, how to tell your story. Um, you know when you visit people's blogs um, and their photos really sum up the personality of the blogger to the extent where if they wrote a guest post on someone else's blog you would instantly know from their photos who that blogger is. That's what this section's all about. Um, I don't think many books would include that. I think that's a really nifty addition to the book. Um, then you've got things like DIY accessories tutorials, so that's your things like how to make a light box, which I'm really going to need, um, a flash diffuser. Um, the majority of the book consists of sections on how to photograph um, different types of textiles, um, different materials. So you've got sections on fashion and fabrics, bags, purses and accessories, knitting and needle craft, jewellery, dolls and toys, ceramics and pottery, art, books, magazines and stationery, and home accessories. So I can't really think of many crafts that wouldn't come under one of those um, headings. And under each of those headings you've got um, planning and setting up, composition, um, common problems and frequently asked questions. And what I really like is that each section has something called the practitioner spotlight, so it's a profile of an artist who works with that um, that material. Um, so you can read their, their tips and tricks about the best way to get great photographs. Um, you also have a section on editing essentials. Do you remember the times when we were all being told that if you wanted to be a great blogger you had to have Photoshop? In fact, some people still believe that now. Um, this is all about how to take a great photograph in the first place, how to get away with doing minimum editing, um, but how to do the editing well without having to use Photoshop, basically. Um, then you have a section on troubleshooting, post-production workflow, 
all these things that we all spend hours doing if you run a blog or if you have an Etsy shop for example um, and you feel that you could have a better system of working with your photographs. I mean I spend hours preparing photos for the blog. Um, lastly you have a section which I think is a good addition because again it didn't have to be included and that's branding, marketing and merchandising, good business practice, social networking, finding motivation and again a practitioner spotlight. So it's not only how to take great photos but it's how to then use them to their best advantage to make sure that um, people are taking notice of your hard work. I mean photography is art, you want people to see it. So if I just show you a few pages so you can get an idea of what the inside looks like. Um, I say, I, there's not much technical jargon in here at all, I think it is all pretty much easy to understand and you can use it either as a book you might read cover to cover, I quite happily take this to bed with me and read it as a book, or you can use it for dipping in and out of to, um, to get particular advice. So, um, as I say, that one retails at £12.99, I paid £9.9p for it on Amazon, I really do think for that price, um, if you want to improve your photography you'd be mad not to buy a copy. Um, so I hope that's um, given you an idea of these books if you're thinking about buying any of them. If you have got any of them yourself, um, I'd love to know what you've thought about them as well, so do feel free to pop a comment in the comments section um, underneath this video. And uh, yeah, so thank you for watching. Bye!